and welcome everybody here on Twitch and of course on YouTube if you're watching this later for our next deck which is going to be Selesnia Midrange. So this is a donation deck that we're playing uh, that we're trying out the explore creatures with Branchwalker and Jaylight Ranger for consistency, Landwar Elf for speed, Vanguard as, as a sticky threat, and to top them off we got the, the really good angels against aggro here with Shalai and Lyra. And then, if that's not enough, we got four Carnage Tyrants. So, we kind of like, we kind of have things for, for every kind of deck that we can face and uh, putting them all together. And that's what we got. So, we got uh, Cyborg, we have Null Hide for the discard decks and just kind of control decks in general. And honestly, Null Hide's pretty good against aggro also. If we want to kind of trim down from Carnage Tyrant to go towards Null Hide, uh, we could be doing that also. Um, Immortal Sun is against Golgari or um, Teferi Control. Same thing with Sorcerer Spyglass. Um, and then we have Settle the Wreckage against uh, Golgari and against uh, aggro. Ixalan's Binding for Drakes and for aggro and for Demir and Knight of Autumn, of course, against... Lots of different aggro decks or enchantment decks, things like that. So let's try out, uh, let's try this out. Hey, Southian, good evening. Uh, Odell, is there any benefit from going to going three three on Shalai and Conclave? Um, well, you know, with having an extra Conclave, you know, you just have an extra removal spell if you'd like it. But I think Shalai is kind of in here to help protect everything else. Especially Dawnbringer. Like, Shalai and Dawnbringer work so well together that having four and four um, should be pretty good. So, uh, the person that donated for this uh, said that they've been doing pretty well with this 60. They like the 60. We put the, the sideboard together here on stream just a little bit ago. Why Adanto and not Wild Growth Walker? Just because Adanto on its own is, is, you know, a really difficult threat to deal with for a lot of decks. So, we're kind of. With Adanto Vanguard and Carnage Tyrant, those are two cards that are awesome against Control. And Shalai and Lyra Dawnbringer, those are two cards that are awesome against Aggro. Overall, against like mid range, we may not like want those things, but we have we have like our, our main deck tuned to like beat aggro decks and control decks, like with, with those kind of things. Um, so you know we're kinda of hedging in that uh, in that respect. So let's try it out. Um, traditional constructed. Selesnia so midrange. What computer do you use and how much did it cost? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. The computer that I have, um, a good friend of mine, Ben, who, who set up my stream for me, built, he built the computer. Um... You know, we just went we just went to a computer store, bought the parts, took them home, he built it. So I don't I don't know. Yeah. I was like I need a computer that I can stream on and everything. This was a couple years ago now. And so he built it. Oh I had Temple Garden. I I thought I'd like two Sunfall Girls though. But yeah, so our opponent's on five and they are also green white. So they are looking like, you know, looking like they may be green white tokens. Okay, let's see. Ah, oh, it's elves. Playing against some elves. Well, that Marwyn's very scary. Like, Elves is, is going to be a tough matchup for us, I think, because they can just be so explosive, and we're not necessarily... We're not really a deck with a lot of interaction. So, you know, we're both kind of, like, decks without very much interaction, but they are very, they're just much more explosive. You know, our opponent's only on five cards, so we're still looking really good here. But... Uh yeah, that's something that could be a problem. Uh, 
I love that they bind in Danto Vanguard. Danto Vanguard is not a very good card in this matchup. And we already got rid of one. <laughs> yeah, that's that is really good that they binding that. Us drawing another one though, obviously not good. But I'm very glad that they binding that and not J Light Ranger. And they didn't just save the binding for the Shalai. Man, they just go so much bigger than us. So I can double block and they can just kill Shalai. That's worth it. We can't just sit there and take take that damage. And the next turn they were going to be able to activate um, that Thorn Lieutenant. It was going to be a huge problem. I don't think our opponent should attack there with the Thorn Lieutenant. Because the next turn they, they get to just activate with it and it's going to be a huge creature. Yeah, this is a tough matchup for us. We're going to have our sell the wreckages in post board. I would assume our opponent has Shalai though as well. Which that that's going to be tough for us. Yeah, I'd love to have like nine cleansing novas in our sideboard, right? <laughs> Cuz this was on a this was on a mold of 5 that our opponent had this. Like imagine if they had seven cards. All right, and, and casting a Jaylight Ranger is not going to be as effective as activating July this turn, I don't believe. I don't think this is really that lucky of a curve for the opponent. This is just like what their deck does. They had they had Marwin. Marwin just casts all their spells. These are just the spells in their deck. Look at our opponent's name, Elf And They're playing Elves. I can respect that. Our opponent probably has played Elves for like a very long time. It just plays Elves in Standard all the time. They probably have like this deck down. Well, it wasn't a very good attack. But that's okay. All right, I think I play the J Light now. Now that we're we're just not even gonna be able to block. They really should just attack. Like if they just attacked out, I was dead. I can jump block twice now. If they, I was just taking lethal, they would have just attacked. We have. Dawnbringer? Nope. And so much for our 24 land deck that I thought that we had... I was thinking we didn't have enough lands before this. I was pre I've been pretty concerned about tw only 24 lands and so much, of so much for that. Alright, so we've seen them have... Some, seen them have Ixlon's Binding. Do I need Night of Autumn for that? I guess, I, yeah, that makes sense. If they, yeah, they don't want to attack all into us at all. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah, this is a really, really tough first match. Oh, they have Banner too. That's a good point. Banner is a good, good thing to destroy also. That's a good one. Hmm. 
Yeah, Vanguard out of here. Yeah, we're going to need to get pretty fortunate with Resplendent Angel uh, and Shalai and Dawnbringer. Yeah, I don't really care to spy glass channeler. No, I didn't see that ghost. I didn't see Naya Value had a top 16. Top 16 where? If only we had a green source for Llanowar Elf. Um, this hand can win with Resplendent Angel and Dawnbringer. We, we had to draw multiple lands. It's very risky, but this hand can certainly win. Which is probably better than what a five card, like to say, than a five card hand. What do y'all think of... The first being Plains Plains, I don't know. What do y'all think of of this? Spyglass doesn't affect Marwyn. Yeah, DJ Poly B, Nia Value is my deck. So we get to keep in Scry. I'm thinking Mulligan. We had to draw so many lands for Dawnbringer. I think we Mulligan. Okay. This we can we can play. Yeah, we need to draw a white source, but I'm certainly keeping that. I'm not getting rid of like the best card that we could have. I hope they have more Steely Champions. We need a planes. Yeah, come on, land drop. I'm certainly glad that we mulligan the six. Okay, there's our planes. That's very good. I'm still gonna take this Beast Whisperer though to keep them from getting a lot of card advantage. First though. Our opponent knows about the Dawnbringer in hand. Thankfully, they have Unclaimed Territory in their deck, which is not a, a playable land at all. So they don't have... So they don't have white mana for, like, a Conclave Tribunal or an Ixalan's Binding or anything like that. And they did name Angel. So that's telling me they have Shalai or Lyra of their own. There's the Dawnbringer. Dang Slasher, that's that's a killer. It's 
So I think our opponent should actually block the... I think they should block the Branch Walker there. I think that's, like, you know, they would take zero damage blocking the Branch Walker. I think that was a good block for them. But I didn't think my opponent was going to do that block, so I, I, I attacked with both. So, you got settled as their last card after GG and still. Um, so, they're playing Dawnbringer 2. So, I'm going to go two more Vivians, taking out Carnage Siren. Be able to kill their angels, kill their um, enchantments, artifacts, stuff like that. Because of how my opponent's been playing, I didn't think they would make a good block. I mean, not necessarily a good block, but I didn't think they would make that specific block for how my opponent been playing. I'm sure they can make a good block. I'm, I'm just saying, like that that specific block, I didn't think they would make it for how they were, like how they were trading off their um, their two three the turn before kind of thing. What do you suggest for a sideboard for Drakes? Um, so I don't play a ton of Drakes myself, so I don't really have a great any great uh, sideboard suggestions for the deck. I'd recommend just going to MTG Goldfish and just kind of looking through the Drake decks on Goldfish, um, and kind of seeing what everybody has. And here you go. There's a link for you. No, we didn't have white mana. Couldn't keep that. Um, because I've never used MTG. So why goldfish and not MTG top eight? Because I've just never used MTG top eight, so I'm not familiar with it. I use goldfish a lot. And I'm familiar with it. I don't really know how what MTG top eight's like. Goldfish is easy to use. I use it. About it. Um, and Jade Light here because I, I really want to hit the lands for Shalai and, and Lyra. Well, I guess we we're going to just draw two lands. I could have gone Angel, Angel, Angel. <laughs> Waddles. You should. My strength is our strength. Sure. You can have that card. Being of cards that aren't very playable, there's one right there. Fine strike, you learn. I wish Huali was was better. I mean, two green white planeswalker. That's just right up my alley. That's just exactly what I want in life. It's just my not very good. My strength is our strength. I wish it was though. A part of all good tales. Does get a lot of loyalty. It's gonna be hard for me to kill. Vivian's a, a killer, though. Let's see if you're worthy. Sometimes restoration means retribution. And unfortunately, we have binding right now, not conclave My tribunal. My strength is our strength. So, I cannot play Resplendent Angel plus binding next turn. I'm certainly playing Resplendent Angel. So we don't get to we don't get to binding. Also, I think I, I think I have to attack Watley. Maybe I don't. Maybe I attack Vivian. No, we attack Watley. Finally, some fun. Yeah, it is. It is a fun card. Huali is certainly a fun card. And Huali's ultimate is amazing. No one knows the so, wilds like I do. When you have like Huali that, that gets to be unchecked, or like gets to survive like this, because it does have a lot of loyalty, and you get a card like Tristani in play, um, you know, if you ever get to that ultimate, it's amazing. My strength is our strength. All right, so I'm going to Binding the Dawnbringer, and then almost kill both Planeswalkers. Uh, 
Oh, I, I do get to kill both. Right. I forgot that, that this thing was a 5-5, not because of Dawnbringer pumping it. So yeah, we'll kill both planeswalkers. Setbacks are part of all good tales. Ah! Every journey has Most wounds obstacles. can heal. Well, Huali did did tick up a lot. So it did that. There shall I. See, they, they needed to stick to the elf plan. Their elf plan that they had game one was awesome. But then just turning into like having some like some angels and like some planeswalkers. I mean, Vivian's great, but just stick to the elf plan, do the elf thing. We had a really good hand though. Um, you know, curving Shalai into Dawnbringer into Resplendent Angel. Perfect. And then with Ixalan's binding, a removal spell for their Dawnbringer. Really couldn't be any better from our side. I mean, I guess, if, you know, if we had Land War Elf into that stuff, it could be better, but... Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and shock. So I have the opportunity to play Resplendent Angel next turn. If we, if we decide, we can play Resplendent into dub, Double Branch Walker. <laughs> I feel like that's good life advice. Stick to the Elf land, do the Elf thing. Thanks, Alder, too. Ugh. Yeah, this looks like Boros Angels. Hmm. Yeah, Branch Walker is just only gonna, gonna do nothing but trade with uh, Token anyway. A oh, coiling an elf is the, is absolutely the right play there for the opponent. Getting rid of that elf is was a very good play. See, always a little awkward where our opponent may be able to play around it, kind of. I want to keep it if they have, you know, if they have Dawnbringer, Rekindling Phoenix, stuff like that. I kind of want to keep it, but I don't think this is the time to be keeping it. Hey, Aduriel. Yeah, and our Branch Walker and Jade Light just trade for two of these. This Rubinalia, great card. We need lands. That's good. Yeah, and if they have Aurelia, you can certainly make Seal Away useless. So we need our sixth land for activating Resplendent Angel, or for activating Shalai, or for casting Carnage Tyrant. So... Oh, that's bad for us. Now Branch Walker doesn't trade anymore. That's certainly bad for us. Huh. So if I double block a knight, we're taking nine and going to five, and they have one less knight. No, I'm going to take ten, go to four. And just throw this in front of Adanto Vanguard. And then I'll still have the Branch Walker to block a knight the next turn. So 
Six land would have been good to activate Resplendent Angel here. That would have been good. If I attack res with Resplendent Angel and they have a removal spell or a pump effect, I'm dead. If I don't attack with Resplendent Angel and they have either of those, then we get to block with those, but then we're... It's not necessarily... Uh, it's not really essentially dead. The thing is, if, if I attack here, put them to 8, I can have lethal the next turn. Uh, if I draw the 6th mana... I think the answer is no attacks. I think that's the the best. This is the best against a removal spell. A pump effect, we're still in terrible trouble. Okay, that's not exactly like the pump effect I was talking about. So that one's fine. What? That's What? Is it really against Trample? They should not be attacking with Benelish Marshal here. Well, yeah, that was just not a good, not a good pump. Oh, okay. I have to pay two life, but then I can activate Resplendent Angel and gain five. can't beat a whole lot. Like, we, we have the board taken care of here. We can't really beat very much of, like, if our opponent has more things, but we got the board taken care of. Yeah, I have to double block Aurelia to kill Aurelia, which is really annoying. I wish they would have attacked that Banalish Marshal. So they get to kill Resplendent Angel. I mean, I could just chump with Shalai, actually. Actually, that's not so bad. So I, I block with a 4-5 Shalai. Like, I, I block with Shalai and activate Shalai. And then Resplendent Angel could be a 6-6. Six, six. No, just trade for the card. I'm just going to trade. Well, what order are they in? How do I know which one's d taking damage first? It's left to right? Okay. And yeah, I'm just gonna act- I'm just gonna gain the 5 life over putting a counter on Chalai and Branch Walker. Still dead to a lot of things. Like, heroic reinforcements is still the, the worst possible thing for us. Dang. If I would have put the counter on, I mean, we'd be at two, though. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and they got exactly seven. Dang. Shock land. Why, why'd you have to be a shock land? Earlier. Um, definitely need Knight of Autumns against History Banalia. Danta Vanguard out of here. Binding is great. Vivian is great. Settle the wreckage. Okay. I could certainly see them playing Shalai in their deck and blanking Settle the Wreckage. Carnage Tyrant, not very good. Attacking with Pumped Angel, with my Resplendent Angel, it would just get blocked by the Aurelia. 
And then we get the other angel, then we gain life. Yeah, I think that was the right move. I wasn't... For some reason, I wasn't considering... I knew that we got the angel, but then I wasn't really considering like the angel with blocking purposes. I was considering us still only having two blockers in my mind. Yeah, I think that, that was the right choice. Seal away is not bad. It's, I mean, they have cards that are good against Seal Away, of course, but if they have, like, a Danto Vanguard right away, we'd want to Seal Away it. So it's not bad, per se. And we have better answers to, like, their Aurelias with having more Vivians in our deck. So it's going to be easier for us to answer, like, Aurelia, and meaning their creature will tap attacking and make Seal Away better. The last song name before this one. I don't think the only way I can check is by going back to it. As far as I know. Um, does anybody in, in chat remember? I don't really, you know. It's kind of hard for me to keep up with the songs, also with everything else. It was the Death Cab for Cutie one. Oh yeah, it was follow you. It was follow me into the dark, or follow you into the dark. One of those. Follow me or follow you into the dark. Following somebody into the dark. So I'll follow you into the dark. Is so. I guess it's follow you. Um. I want it. I really want to play Vivian next turn. <sighs> Dang. We got four. We got three more of those. Really want to play Vivian next turn. Yeah, no special. It's okay. You don't have to be sorry about asking for the song there. I, n I never mind. I just wasn't. It's you know it's tough, but yeah, we figured it out. Hey Grimwall, love you too. Her mode here would be ticking up and finding more lands. Ticking up, finding more lands and creatures and stuff like that. Just gaining card advantage. DD is a donation deck. So a deck somebody else designed and donated for me to play. Take six. I'm binding the Benelish Marshal. Do you think the last Grand Prix that KCI will get a ban soon? I wouldn't be surprised if KCI gets a ban soon. Um, it's not necessarily... It's not an enjoyable deck for kind of anyone. PCI is Cart Clan Ironworks. Alright, and I, I am paying the two life for Vivian here. Um, so I can have more blockers to try to protect Vivian. Would you like to see what you can't stop nature? So yeah, I would not be surprised in the slightest if KCI would get banned. Um, I think it would be better for modern to not have KCI in the format. I don't think it. I don't think it makes anybody's experience 
playing Magic more enjoyable. They're not attacking Vivian? Really? Just not attacking Vivian? Night Autumn's a really good draw step where we don't need to, um, we don't need to minus Vivian to, to destroy the, oh, right. Night Autumn's not a really good draw step. And I did need to just minus. Oh, no. Night doesn't work. Legend tried to tell me. Oh, no. I really did need to minus Vivian. Wow. Get wrecked me. That little honor guard in the middle of the screen I forgot about. And then heroic reinforcements for the ultimate punishment. Yeah, I would... I would, uh, well, you get to choose. So if we would have removed, if we would have removed Ixalan's Binding, then we would have our Ixalan's Binding come into play and we would be able to exile anything and we'd be able to choose what we'd like to exile. And so I would have, I would have removed Benelish Marshall again. I don't have any Humongulus decks in mind. <laughs> no. There are more Humongulus's now, though. Our opponent is doing a very good job of bolting the bird. Carnage Iron and Danto Vanguard are horrible in this matchup, and our hand's filled with them. Why can't our hand be filled with Shalai's and Lyra's, which are amazing in this matchup? We kind of have like, you know, we have both ends of the, of the spectrum there with, uh, you know, cards that are really great against control and cards that are really great against aggro. We unfortunately have our cards that are great against control against the aggro deck here. You do respond an angel. We need to draw Dawnbringer next turn. Just gonna take eight, go to. I don't know if there's much B in this hand. We just need we just need to draw Dawnbringer. I mean that's like our, our only out. So close. So close. Yeah, KCI is, is difficult to pilot. Alright, settle, binding. Knight, um, Carnage Tyrant, and Vanguard out, and so that's 59. I like Nullhide, but we do have a, a decent amount of spells, but I do like Nullhide. 
With Tribunal, Binding, and Knight of Autumn, I think I have enough ways to deal with Frenzy where I don't really need Vivian. Let's play these Null Hides. Alright. <laughs> Gotta start believing. There we go. Well, this, this should help out. You know, like, we our deck is much, much better for this matchup now. Huh. Okay, okay. Alright, we got a plan. We got a plan. We're gonna be dropping beasts. Our tech is much, much better. All lands. <laughs> There's no reason not to block to just take that one damage because all that we would do is attack them for one with our Land of War Elf and then their Firebrand would kill our Land of War Elf the following turn. So there's just no reason to take that damage there. So that damage can be very, very important in this matchup. I don't think we can take it. Alright, where's Lyra Dawnbringer? Woo! There she is. There she is. That's a big creature right there. Opponent's kind of looking at their bolts. Looking at Null Hide, looking at their bolts. Yeah, we're just going to start attacking for six. They're just going to have to be chumping. I'm playing another Null Hide next turn. I think if I play another Dawnbringer. They certainly just have like two removal spells or Firebrand plus Coil, something like that to deal with Dawnbringer. I think we want to start putting pressure on them with these Null Heights first, see if they like use their cards on whatever, and then and drop Dawnbringer last. Hey QQ image. Yeah, right now with with double firebrand, all they would need is any bolt, and bolt plus the two firebrands take out Dawnbringer. They have another chain whirler though. Another chain whirler would be really bad for me, where they'd have six power of first strike. That'd be really, really bad for me. Kindling Phoenix wouldn't be the best. But they have less cards. Only two cards. Is either one of these a bolt? Hopefully not. Likely yes. Okay. There goes a bolt. Makes it easier for Dawnbringer to survive. <laughs> Just had four Thaumatic Compasses with all those Maze of Ith. Yeah, that's a it's an underrated card. We had a lot of success with Thaumatic Compass um, the other day. 
uh, yesterday with our green-white land deck. So it looks like their last card's a bolt they'll be able to finish off Dawnbringer. No. It's a risk factor. Risk factor, not good against Dawnbringer. Dawnbringer, certainly the better card there. So I can easily take eight when I'm gain or take four when I'm gaining five. What? Why don't they activate their firebrand and shoot me? Nobody got the pack opening right. Oh, I did not realize Alex Bernicini got banned for life today. That's good. Alright, game three. Um, nothing else to do. Let's go. Yeah, I think they had given up, I guess, at the point. Let's keep. We got Branch Walker J Light, help us hit land drops, get to Dawnbringer. It's exactly what we want. What did we lose to? We lost to Boros. Like mid range. Mid range aggro. Or just, I guess it's just all aggro. Always thought it was Aurelia for kind of mid-range stuff. Yeah, because they have Benelish Marshall and Dante Vanguard and Heroic Reinforcements and stuff. Yeah, they got us. Second Dawnbringer is perfect. Loving where we're at here. That's not a bad card either. We can just Knight of Autumn next turn to gain four life if we want. Um, Knight of Autumn gain, gaining four life, of course, only trades with Firebrand, but... Yeah, that's, that's just a solid card to kind of have here where we can, like, we can do that and get the Temple Garden in play. I don't really need that Conclave Tribunal. We got Binding still in case of a Frenzy. We got Pwns down to one card. I think we got this one. So let's gain four life. This one could be close, though. Like, we'll see. If they have... I mean, if they have, like, what, Risk Factor... I mean, they could just have two burn spells, honestly. They could have just, like, Shock Lightning Strike. I'm, I'm dead to Shock Lightning Strike. Or Shock Shock. Like, I'm taking six here going to four, but then we do get to play Dawnbringer to help stabilize. Honestly, one Shock, we're dead. Actually. Now certainly we're dead with one Shock. Yeah, this, this could be tough. But if we get to untap... We're gonna be looking great. But if they have one shock, we're dead. Come on, don't have a shock, don't have a shock. No shock. Yeah, like they could they could bolt whatever I block, but okay, it's a frenzy. Alright, so Oh, you should not attack here. Right? Well they I guess they deal one damage. They do deal a damage. Hey, Brick Owl. Why do we have all these lands? Okay, so... 
Do I attack and play new Dawnbringer or Binding Frenzy and hope they brick on brick for one turn and then be able to attack and Dawnbringer? If I Binding Frenzy, I do not get to attack with Dawnbringer. Binding and Prey. I kind of like Binding Prey. So many things kill me. Any burn spell. A lava runner. So many things kill me. I'm kind of thinking the, the double Lyra. Yeah, the pyre guy kills me. Frenzy doesn't necessarily kill me, but it... Alright. Alright. Yeah, Chain Whirler kills us too. Alright, they're going to have a land here. I'm feeling a land. I'm feeling land. Land drop. Go ahead, make your land drop. No! Shock! Uh, dang. Dang. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a tough call either way. Because, you know, like, one one turn with Frenzy, they can, can go crazy, but... So, my other option, of course, is... So, if I attack with Dawnbringer, I go to 6. I play new Dawnbringer. I pass. On their upkeep, they cast that shock. So, I'm down to 4. Or Dawnbringer is taken to whichever one they want. So they would still cast that shock on their upkeep and have three more mana where if they're one of their next two cards is a burn spell, I'm dead. Yeah, because do they would just burn Dawnbringer for two. And then... So they'd have to have another burn spell there. And then I'd have to un... Because then I have to have them not have any burn spells and just hit like two lands in a row kind of thing after that. It's gonna Which is going to be pretty tough. I don't think the double Lyra, you know, thinking about this here, I don't think it was actually better. What do we get? Hey, Resplendent Angel. Tough. Tough game there. Just, that's like, that's exactly what Red can do. Game one, they just rolled us over because our hand was not good against Red. Um, you know, like, that happens with mid-range decks. Sometimes you draw your wrong half of the deck. And so we had the wrong half of the deck there that game one. Um, got rolled over. Game two, um, you know, we won pretty easily. Like, inc you know, very convincingly. And then there, that game three, their hand was awesome. Their hand was awesome. We had Branch Walker on two, Jade Light on three. Night of Autumn, gain four life on four, Dawnbringer on five, and they killed us through that. And then we had Binding on six for their for their frenzy, and we we're just dead. So tough one there. Um, overall with the deck, I think the deck's okay. I I myself prefer Selesnya Angels to this deck quite a bit. I think having, you know, like... So, like, the difference is we got Llanowar Elf, Branchwalker, and Jade Light instead of more Resplendent Angel, History of Benalia, uh, Thorn Lieutenant, Tikali Honor Guard. It's kind of, like, the difference. And then don't have Carnage Tyrant in that deck. You'd have a Johnny Mentor... or Adversary of Tyrants instead. With Carnage Tyrant in the sideboard. Yeah, I, I like this deck's very similar to Selesnya Angels, and I'd prefer that with the history of Benalias and stuff. But there we go. That's a little bit different take on Selesnya. It's good. To, it's always good to play different things, even if you know, like I like the Selesnya Angels deck. I'm very comfortable with it. But it's good to it's good to play like a different deck, you know, and to um, play something else also, and just just to kind of see um, with like what how different cards kind of interact and everything. So. 
I would probably wait on crafting... I probably would not craft Ly uh, Lyra Dawnbringer right now. I think I'd recommend waiting um, for the next set. Uh... Because there's going to be even just better removal with Ravnica Allegiance. And I, I could certainly see Dawnbringer seeing less and less play. Dawnbringer kind of seems like a sideboard card against uh, the aggro decks of the format right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, the current list of Selesnya Angels. You can, you can find the, the list here under exclamation point decks. I can also just kind of show it on screen here. Um, that's my current list of Selesnya Angels. Very similar. Um, but with Carnage Tyrant over in the sideboard instead of the main deck. And we have a Sure Assemble to help protect our, our Angels there. And then we got Honor Guard, Thorn Lieutenant. I don't have Land War Elf in this deck because I'm very white heavy with Resplendent Angel, History, a Johnny, you know, we need double white there. So I, it's pretty hard to get Llanowar Elf down early and also cast those. But there we go. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that sub button and check out another video. The next one that we're going to be playing is going to be Golgari Aggro Lands. So if you're watching on YouTube, hopefully you flip on over to that. All right, thanks for watching.